Now we want to get in the business of square roots. The main idea here, we want to take the operation of squaring and work backwards. So we'll start with the definition. I'll say b is the square root of a if b squared is equal to a. So the idea is if somebody gives you an a, we're looking for a b such that when you multiply it by itself, a comes out. If b is zero or a positive number, then we'll use this special notation. We call this radical notation. And then this will also get the fancy name principal square root of a. Typically, that's what people mean when they say square root. We only want the positive answer. Now, let's check some examples. So if we take the square root of 36, okay, that's going to be a 6. The way we know this, if I take 6 and square it, 36 comes out. So what comes out of here has to match what's under the radical sign. If we go to basics, square root of 0, that's going to be 0, because if we take 0 and square it, 0 comes out. This is the 0 that we want to match to the radical symbol. Square root of 1, okay, that's going to be 1. Likewise, because if we take 1 and square it, a 1 comes out. For something a little bit more complicated, okay, let's try something like the square root of 49 over 81. Now here, the idea is you just have to think, okay, we've got a fraction, and if I'm squaring, numerator and denominator are going to have to square up to numerator and denominator. So the 7 will square up to 49, the 9 will square up to 81. If you're not sure, you just check your answer. So 7 over 9 squared, that's going to give me the 49 over 81. That's supposed to match what's under the radical. Now, let's tidy things up a little bit. So if I take the square root of minus 1, this is going to be undefined. Okay, so that means square roots of negative numbers are going to be a restriction on what we can do with real numbers. Now, why do we expect this not to produce something meaningful? Let's take a look. So if I just give this a name, b equal to square root of minus 1, then the definition that we're using is going to say that b squared has to be equal to minus 1. And then if we think about how things square, positive numbers square to positive numbers, 0 squares is 0, and negative numbers square to positive numbers. So I can never square a real number and get a negative number out. And so, undefined. Now, let's get back to the general notion of square root. We see b is the square root of a, then so is minus b. For instance, if we take the square root of 4, okay, we'll get a 2 because 2 squared is equal to 4. We'll also get another square root in general. Okay, if I take minus 2, we square that, I get minus 2 times minus 2. Minus minus is a plus, which will also give us a 4. So 4 has two general square roots plus minus 2. That's the general pattern for positive numbers. Okay, we'll get two square roots that differ by plus minus. Square root of zero is zero. Here's a case where we have just one square root. And then for negative numbers, if we're going to work over the real numbers, we get undefined. There will be no square roots for this case. Next. We want to develop arithmetic of square roots, so that way we can put square roots into our arsenal of functions. So let's take a look at the function f of x equal to the square root of x. Now we know we won't get anything useful if we put negative numbers in there. So I'm just going to pick a bunch of numbers starting at 0, so we'll go up to 4, put it into square root of x and see what we get. If 0 goes in, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, and then for nice numbers, square root of 4 is 2. For 2 and 3, we might want to go to a calculator to get these numbers. I'll just cut them off at three decimal places, but these are going to go on forever. So the square root of 2 
okay, is roughly 1.414. If we want to make sure of that, what I can do is, is just take 1.4 and square it. I get a 1.96, which is close enough to 2 to be believable. Likewise, for square root of 3, take 1.7 and square it, I get a 2.89, again, in the ballpark of 3, so believable. Now, if we take these points, plot them in the xy plane, we'll get this curve here if we just fill in the spaces. So that's our graph of square root of x. Note this would disagrees with what we've been talking about. So for the domain, okay, all the x's that we can put in that produce actual numbers, that's only going to work for 0 or the positive numbers, so everything going off to the right. And then for all the numbers that come out, here we're using the positive square root, so I can only get 0 or positive numbers out. So that starts at 0 and then goes all the way up. So domain and range. With the algebra of linear inequalities, we have enough technique to consider domains for other functions with radical expressions. For instance, we take f of x equal to, okay, we've got square root of 5x minus 15. I'm able to access what's inside the square root by the following language trick. Now, we already know we can't take square roots of negative numbers. A fancy way to say that that links us to algebra, I use, okay, it's worth putting on a no card, square root of box is defined if box is greater than or equal to zero. So we don't worry about how complicated what's inside the box is to get it out of the square root, greater than or equal to zero, and then we worry about doing algebra. For instance, in this example, okay, I'll note 5x minus 15 is in the box, so I take the box out, set it greater than or equal to zero. 5x minus 15 greater than or equal to zero is something that we know how to do. We do the business of isolation of x, so that's just a linear equality with some care taken for the inequality. I'll add 15 to both sides. That gives me a 5x greater than or equal to 15. We divide both sides by 5, which is legal since it's not a negative number, so I don't have to switch the sign. And then that gives me an x greater than or equal to 3 in set builder notation. If I draw the picture, remember we interpret this as all x to the right of 3. Because we have equals, we'll color the dot in in the picture. And then for interval notation, I can go from here, 3 to infinity, and then we're going to use the hard bracket on the 3 since we want the 3 included. And that's problem for radicals and domains other than plain old square root of x. We can check this a little bit. Typically, we don't do the check, but just let's make sure that we're good with evaluating actual numbers in here. So, for instance, if we put 0 in here, well, I'm going to get square root of minus 15, which is undefined. This is actually good because we know the good numbers are going to start at 3 and then go off to infinity. So 0 is not in the domain. If we try 3, that's right on the edge of the domain. We're going to get 15 minus 15, square root of 0. I get a 0. A number's coming out, so that's in the domain. So 3's in the domain. If I want another good number, i got to just keep trying things until I find one. If you got a calculator, you could just go with, um, let's say, 4. See that you get something that's an actual number coming out, and then you're good to go. For a clean number, if I put an 8 in here, Okay, 5 times 8 is 40, minus 15 is a 25. Square root of 25 gets me to a 5. This is a number, so number in, number out, 8 will be in the domain. That's square roots. There's no need to stick to squaring. We can go to cubing, raising the fourth powers, and so on. So that would be the business of nth roots. For here, we'll just take a look at the differences between square root and cube root. So for definition, we'll say b is a cube root of a if b to the third power is equal to a. So b times b times b. 
We use a similar notation. Okay, so I have the radical symbol, but now I want to put a three up and to the left, and that's going to be the cube root of a. Note here, I just say the cube root. Let's take a look at what happens with negative numbers. Now, if we're going to put numbers in, let's start off with, say, zero. Cube root of zero is zero because if we check zero, 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 we multiply, we get a zero out. And so that matches what's under the radical. Likewise, cube root of one is one. One cubed is going to be a one. And a little bit different than square root, if I take the cube root of minus one, I'm going to get a minus one out. And so the pattern here is when we take cube roots of negative numbers, they produce negative numbers also. So no longer undefined. Now, for cube root of minus one, what are we trying to do here? If I say this is minus one, then minus one cubed has got to get us back to minus one. We check. So three minus ones, two of them are going to turn to a plus, leaving us with the minus one that we expect. So that checks out. So no longer undefined. Four numbers with a little bit more going on. If I take, say, the cube root of 27, that'll be equal to three. Three cubed, three three times gets me to 27. And then if I take the cube root of 64, minus 64, we're going to get minus four. So if you know what the cube root of 64 is, okay, four times four is 16, times four gets you to 64. This is just using the rule minus goes to minus under cube roots. Finally, let's just take a look at an expression with a cube root and a function. So that way we can just check um, substituting values in. So for instance, if I take f of x to be the cube root of 2 minus x, say I, if I put 10 in there, okay, that's going to be cube root of 2 minus 10. That's going to give me cube root of minus 8. Cube root of 8, okay, well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so we're going to get a 2, and then minus goes to minus to give me a minus 2. Likewise, if I put a minus 6 in here, Okay, remember, when we substitute negative numbers in, it's a good idea to keep them with parentheses so we don't start dropping signs. Here we'll have 2 minus a minus 6. The minus minus becomes a plus, getting us an 8. And then the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that's cube roots. For nth roots, the same idea. We could do fourth roots, fifth roots. Your exponent's just going to change to the n that you're using. So Fourth roots, you're raising the power four, and so on.